All right, Shalom. First and foremost, giving all praise to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakwadash for the Spirit. Do this lesson. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone who will do well. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Shalom to the men of the Lord, prophesying, preaching, and teaching on the howies and bowies in sincerity and in truth. Shalom, Barakatham. And uh, I wanted to land back off of a lesson that I had heard one of the elders. Uh, going into regarding the sacrifice and uh, this was heavy edifying for me myself and you know I feel like it's important to understand something that was so integral to the culture of, of the chosen people of the Most High you know and this is basically uh, it was so important that one of the major tasks of Yahweh Shai the Lord when he came back was to completely revamp it, you know? And uh, the, the today the controversy is between, you know, a different particular camp, uh, uh, Sakari or whatever, they have, you know, questions and whatnot about uh, is the book of Hebrews right or wrong? And, you know, once you read it, man, through the spirit, when you read the book of Hebrews, the things that you try to pull out of it to disqualify it from being the quote unquote word of God, you ultimately see you just didn't have the understanding because this completely lines up with the rest of the scriptures, all right? And I believe the point of contention was Hebrews 10 and 4, all right? So I'm going to read uh, from Hebrews 10 and 1. It says, For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of of the things right because the system of sacrifices all right what it was designed to do was to keep us in good standing with the most high all right that's what it was designed to do so if you were if you had a if you had a the right spirit you were contrite you were you had a mind to serve the most high but let's just say you slipped up you know for that moment when you slipped up and you did something in your flesh that was a sin, you could go and make a sacrifice to the temple, all right? And then you would actually be good with the Most High, completely good until you until you sinned again, right? Now, that moment when you have made that sacrifice and you have the right spirit towards the Most High, you're actually in the perfect standing with them. And that's that shadow, right? Because... That standing that we're in, we could never keep that status of being in good standing with the Most High continually. Why? Because we would always, we're in the flesh, and we would always go off. We would always go off. So this is that shadow of the things to come of being in good standing with the Most High. And it says it's not the very image of those things because when we get into the kingdom, all right, we're going to be in perfect standing with the Most High at all times. Why? Because we're going to have new bodies, we're going to be changed, and we're not going to go off, period. All right, it says, and can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, make the comers their unto perfect. So, the sacrifices that we were given up, it didn't, it didn't cleanse, it didn't remove the ability for us to commit a sin. You know, like you were just as likely to commit that sin again after the sacrifice as you were before the sacrifice. You know, you looked at somebody's woman and you had a thought come run through your head and you like, you were remorseful and you, you, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you repent, you know, in your mind, you will make a sacrifice. And, and, and once you made the sacrifice for that sin, it didn't, it didn't remove your ability from that sin to go away. All right. You could still, you could still go off. And that's, that's basically what the first part of Hebrews 10 is talking about. They're getting, they're conflating the forgiveness of sin with the taking away of sin. You know, that's basically what this thing is all about. Now it says, for then would they not have ceased to be offered? So if the, if, if sacrifice was, was going to take away our ability to sin, it was going to completely clean us, then we would have stopped sacrificing is what he's saying. All right. And it says, because that the worshipers once purged should have no more conscious of sin so it shouldn't even be in our mind to sin once you gave that sacrifice you know but that's not the case 
you're still just as likely to go off again after that sacrifice. That sacrifice was just to keep you in good standing. You had to con continually and constantly do it. All right. In verse three, it says, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. <laughs> All right. So it didn't make us any more likely to, to, to be to be righteous. In order for you to be righteous, you had to be righteous in your spirit, in your mind. It wasn't the sacrifice and you technically being a good standing that made you righteous. Because you could be a wicked nigga, all right, have the mind to go back and commit sin again, offer a sacrifice, and technically that sacrifice gives you that forgiveness. But in your mind and your spirit, you're still wicked, you know? And sacrifice doesn't cleanse you of that. Because it says here, they, they were reminded basically every year, every time they went to go sacrifice, you were reminded basically that you were a sinner. And the sin that's going to be taken away from us through, your, through the sacrifice of Yahawashai, once, he, that, once that sacrifice goes through all the way, we're never going to have to worry about sin again, ever. All right? Now, this is the main controversial point. It was says, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. And so, you know, there are guys that get bent out of shape about, you know, what do they mean that, you know, the sacrifice didn't take away sins, you know? But when you read what it's talking about, it's, it's not talking about forgiveness of sin, all right? When you go to the word take away, alfareo, <coughs> It means to take from, take away, remove, carry off, to cut off, <laughs> all right? Take away, cut off, smite off. And see, sin has never been cut away from us. It's, it's in our flesh, all right? That's what it's saying. It's not saying that the bulls that you offer up won't, won't provide you forgiveness. It's saying that it won't, it won't take away your ability to sin. When you go down to Hebrews 10 and 18, the 18th verse, this word here where it says remission, that word goes into forgiveness. All right? A thesis, remission. All right? It's used for remission, forgiveness, to release from bondage or imprisonment, forgiveness, a pardon. All right? So the, the bullocks and, and goats and lambs they did give us forgiveness, but they didn't take away our sin. Our because our ability to sin, our ability to sin still remained the same. Alright? Now you read down to Hebrews ten and five, it basically quotes Psalms forty. It says, Wherefore when he cometh into the world, he said, He saith, Sacrifice and offering wouldest thou thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin. Thou has had no pleasure. All right. So the Most High doesn't take pleasure or joy in, in, in the sacrifices that we offered up. He's he. That's a tool that He gave to us because He said, "Look, I know you're in the flesh. You're gonna go off here and there in order. This is the way that you're gonna stay in good standings with me. What it, what the what the system of sacrifice is? It's a system of acknowledgement of your sins, and it's a system of penalty because you have to take you know, a goat, you have to take a bullock, you know, a lamb or whatever. That back in the day, that cattle, that was wealth. All right. <laughs> so if you go off, one, the most high says, every sin you have, you're gonna acknowledge it, and every sin you do, you're gonna pay for it. All right. And and, and it, it's an even exchange of flesh of flesh, because the flesh is what allowed us to call was is what allowed us to sin to begin with. All right. And so flesh is required. And the Most High set this system up through the Levitical priesthood, all right, down from Moses, so that we could stay in good standings with him, all right? It says, Then I said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O power. And that's very powerful because the book of Hebrews itself is in question for some reason, all right? Now, what it means by the becoming the volume of the book is y'all can't get caught up on things that were t that Yahweh spoke directly to prophets versus you know came through an apostle or came through 
because all of it's connected, man. All of there, there's no there's no contradiction between the Old Testament apocrypha or the New Testament. You know, it's all interlinked because it's in the volume of the book. So you can't scoff at one part of the scriptures or hold it in a less lesser value than the other parts. Why? Because it's it's part of the whole thing, you know. Now, yeah, some of the writings and precepts may not sound as powerful as certain particular prophecies, you know, but they all play their role. They're all part of a body of, of information, a body of wisdom. All right. Your pinky or your toe seems small in size compared to some other parts of your body, but it's important. It's a part of your body, man. It's a part of you being whole and getting the full truth. It says above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then he said, Lo, I come to do thy will, O power. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. All right. And so what that's basically saying is that this old system is no longer going to be necessary. All right. And when you notice up here, it's, it's talking about specifically sin offerings, all right? You'll still be able to do peace offerings and free will offerings and, and, and things of that nature, all right? But but ultimately, the sin is no longer going to be necessary for us to, to, to be right with the Heavenly Father, okay? It says, by the which we are all sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahweh Shai, a Mashiach, once and for all. So in other words, what what Yahweh Shai did, man, that sacrifice was, was powerful in more ways than you can know, man, because not only did it was it forgiveness for all the sins that we would do leading up to when he's coming back, but that sacrifice is gonna remove sin from us, from his people. Alright? And that's only for the elect that he's covering the sins up until he gets back. But that other part of the sacrifice, that phase where it's going to remove sin, every Israelite is going to be perfect, man. You know? Thanks to this sacrifice. You know? And that and that's a very important thing to, uh, to understand because guys will take certain precepts out of the scriptures and try to use that to, to, to cast a shadow on, on, on a particular book or try to weigh one thing over the other. You know, you get caught, you getting caught up on genealogies and typos, like a genealogy or a typo or a translation does not discount the scriptures. All right. There's no contradiction in the understanding of them, regardless if there's a, you know, you know, a textual error. All right. And, and I'm going to go back, actually read, uh, Psalms 40. It says, Psalms 40 and 6, it says, Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire, mine ears hast thou opened, burnt offerings and sin offerings hast thou not required. All right, now that can get, that can throw you off too. That sounds like what the uh, book of Hebrews is saying, but do you throw out the book of Psalms? You know? Because ultimately, you have to get the understanding on these things, okay? When it says the, uh, that the sin offering is not required, it goes into something else David was saying. When you get the context, when you read Psalms 51. Because the, uh, the last point that I wanted to bring out was the, the system of sacrifice was not designed for... Uh, it was only designed for sins of our flesh that we would fall short on, things that we were remorseful for. All right, sins that you uh, sins. There's a sin when you you fuck up. You say like, oh man, you at the you you out fishing, you know, and you you didn't you didn't you can't catch any fish, and the fish you you catch is unlawful, and you you hungry, you starving. You say, man, I couldn't catch anything else today. You get hungry and you eat the fish that's unlawful, but you were remorseful in your spirit. You say, Lord, I know I shouldn't have eaten that fish, but I was really hungry, and I'm, I'm you know, Salaki, I'm sorry. 
that's that's a shortfall in your flesh all right that's what this that's what the system of sacrifice was designed for it's not designed for niggas who turn their back against the most high all right that that's two there's two levels or more than one level of sin and when you read psalms 51 which i'm gonna get you understand that right Look, this is David after he got rebuked by, by, by Nathan, all right? It says, uh, Psalm 51 and 16, it says, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. <laughs> all right, let me start up a little bit. Verse 15, O Lord, open my up and down my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. Why? Why did he say that? Because the sin that David committed, he he turned his back on the Most High. It wasn't just a slip up in the flesh. That matter with Bathsheba, it, it wasn't just him getting caught up in a room with her, and, and one thing leading to another. And you know, no, this was a plot that happened to, to him over a period of time, where he plotted with her. Then he plotted to take out Uriah the Hittite. All right, that's more than just a slip up in the flesh. That's him. He turned his back to the Most High, and this one of the reasons why David got so he got he got so upset. <laughs> he got remorseful, man, because he realized that what it feels like to turn your back on the Heavenly Father, and that's the whole point of he writing Psalm 51. Because he understood that the law of sacrifice, it it, it wasn't it wasn't meant to to uh, to cover those kind of sins when you turn your back on the Most High. It's meant to cover the sins of like you slipping up in the flesh and, and these things and things of that nature, you know. But but what happened, right? Because Israel always made sacrifices, but yet why we kept going into captivity? We kept getting punished despite us giving up sacrifice, despite us giving sacrifices, despite the priests making sacrifices on our behalf. <laughs> all right, we would still go into captivity. Why? Because the the system of sacrifice. It, it was designed for for people who slipped up in the flesh who had a contrite heart that's why it says it here it says let me read 16 again Psalm 51 and 16 for thou desirest not sacrifice else would I give it thou delightest not in burnt offering the sacrifices of the most high are a broken spirit <laughs> all right and a contrite heart O power thou will not despise so that's the true sacrifice all right because the system of giving up bullocks and, and goats and all of these things that was that was designed to appease you from judgment from from things from individuals who 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 uh, whose heart was right towards the most high but they slipped up you know the, the, the scriptures say a righteous man you know he falls seven times you know and he and he repents roughly paraphrasing See, the law of sacrifice was reserved for, for, for those individuals. That's what the system was set up for. Now, if you turn your back against the Most High, that, that ain't going to cut it, man. That's why David says here, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. And what happened? David had to get judged, man. Now he received what's what's later called the mercies of David when you read Isaiah 55, because the Most High had mercy on him because the real punishment should have been death. All right. It says the sacrifices of the Most High are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. All right. Now what's one example of that before uh before I close it out to prove to you that. Sacri the the sacrificial system through the Levites it was not it was not designed to be abused by niggas who were committed to doing wickedness it was designed for the individuals who who slipped up they repent you know in other words you can't just be going up and, and giving sacrifices and not really turning back from your wickedness in your heart you got to be right man all right What's the proof of that? This is part of it. This is Amos 5 and 21. It says, I hate 
I despise your feast days and will not smell in your solemn assembly. So just like you can you can offer up sacrifices in bad faith to the most high, knowing you're gonna go back and do wickedness, you can hold feast days. You got guys who are not in the right spirit partaking the Passover. It's the same thing. All right, you're not gonna get the benefits of Passover if you're not right. It don't matter if you conduct the ceremony perfectly and, and follow the, the law to the T. It doesn't matter. If you're not right in your spirit, the Most High is not dealing with you, man. All right? And it's the same for sacrifices. If you're not right and you're trying to offer up a sacrifice for a sin, knowing you still ain't repented really in your mind, that's a problem. Amos 5 and 22, it says, Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your, and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. <laughs> all right neither will i regard the peace offerings of your fat beast why because the most high at one point he just stopped accepting offering uh he just stopped accepting sacrifices man why because because israel the sins that we were committing were not just us slipping up in the flesh all right it's it, it's sins that require us to turn our back on him and one of the main uh one of the main primary examples of the type of sin that you turn your back on the most high is idol worship all right that that's basically in order for you to engage in idol worship you basically just have to say look yahweh <laughs> all right uh i'm i'm rocking with uh I'm, I'm rocking with uh with molech you know this ain't got nothing to do with my flesh i'm rocking with molech that's what you have to do in order to be in the idol worship and and the law the, the system of sacrifice does not cover that this is what israel was doing they were worshiping other gods willfully with no intention of, of repenting and, and being uh contrite and they were going up and giving up sacrifices all right to to try to avoid judgment and the most i got tired of it <coughs> to lock you it says Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. All right, so he doesn't want to hear anything from you, you know? Why? Because you abuse the system of sacrifice. Something that he gave to us so we can stay in good standing. You know how Jake, you give Jake an inch and he takes a mile. It says, but let judgment run down as waters <laughs> and righteousness as a mighty stream, because technically... If you offer the sacrifice, you're supposed to be forgiven for that, right? And Jake was going in there trying to get this forgiveness with no intention of being right. He, they were going right back and, and worshiping other idols, all right? So the Most High said, I'm not accepting these anymore. Now let judgment rain down as water, all right? Verse 25, it says, Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? So he's, 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 uh, being uh sarcastic he's like well who are y'all giving sacrifices to in the wilderness why were y'all there 40 years because they were they they refused to let these other idols go man all right and it says but ye have borne the tabernacle of your molech and kiyun kiyun your images the star of your god which ye made to yourselves so there it is because what what is the main what was the main thing that happened before the Most High got completely pissed off? Before every time he put us in captivity, what would happen? It wasn't just Israelites, you know, having moments of weakness. All right, it was them being wild and out, being straight niggas, going right after other gods, making a mockery. You know, and the scriptures say, you know, the Most High is not mocked. All right, that's what that's what would happen. You know. Imagine a woman, imagine you coming home to your woman and, and she's in the bed with another man and she's got an attitude with you. Expecting you still to pay the bills and it, that that's what was happening, man. That's why we went to these captivities. This wasn't no just, I, I slipped up. And we did this over and over and over again. All right. And what, and what that proves to you is that not only did the uh, system of sacrifice wasn't suffice enough to handle our small sins but we needed we needed our hearts changed man and that's when you go into to the new covenant and to the, to the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai because we need it man you know 
even the brothers who are sincere, who who uh, who are doing this thing for the right reason, you know, we we go off still too. All right, but ultimately, as a whole, Israel was never able to get it together, and that's what uh, the Book of Hebrews is going in about. Okay, when you read it. Let me get back to it real quick. So how can you throw this out, you know? And I'm just saying my piece on it, you know, it was on my spirit. Let me scroll down a little bit. Verse 16, this tells you what's needed because sacrifice was never able to take away our sins as it says in the fourth verse. That sin is still with us. We still have the propensity to sin. You know, our flesh is going to get to us. And then you have some Israelites, they just, you know, demons get on them and they completely turn left off away from the Most High. You know? And so Hebrews is outlining, the 10th chapter is outlining this whole thing, right? In the context of Yahweh Shai, you know, making that ultimate sacrifice for us. So we so we could be redeemed and we don't have to worry about this again. This is Hebrews ten and sixteen. It says, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those after those days, saith the Lord Jehovah, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. All right. And you can get uh you can get that in uh Jeremiah thirty, thirty one as well to get more context on that, but that's basically the new covenant. That's what's required, all right? It says, and their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Now where remission of the now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. For sin. So when we get in the kingdom, not you other heathen, when we get in the kingdom, we're not gonna have to worry about this anymore. Alright. Because the because the old way, the original way was not able to to, to to keep sin off of us all right that's what verse four is talking about you know so i'll end it on that uh hopefully our brothers were edified call halal yahweh by hashem yahweh shai by hashem rachakwadash wa abba babal shalom